And we got to talk to everything. He's already had a few people who have. Have what? Who sits here? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Who have what? Who have been trying to woo them on having their kids come to this school corporation or that school corporation? <coughs> Is that Carrie? And she has her administrative Carrie, somebody. I don't know. And you know, um, my husband is just making it up on that committee. Mm -hmm. As well as the committee to hire the football. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right, mm -hmm. but it's hard to read. Good evening and welcome to our Wednesday, February the 13th, 2013th work session of the Richmond Community Schools School Board of Trustees. Would you please stand for the pledge? I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, our mission statement. Our mission statement states, Richmond Community Schools mission, graduate students who are literate, responsible, proficient in state and national standards, and college or career ready. And our vision. The board vision, by 2020, Richmond Community Schools will be the highest performing school system in East Central Indiana. Thank you. Uh, next is public commentary, and we certainly invite our public <laughs> to come to our meetings and to um, interact with us, Party. but um, we don't seem to have too much of an audience tonight, so um, anyway, we do encourage uh, people to come and to um, uh, join us for our meetings. We're ready to start with the action items. We have an action item that we're bringing tonight concerning the third grade academy. At our last meeting, we discussed the RFP that was, was going out, and I would like for Mr. Millis con to continue that conversation and ask for uh, an approval tonight on the <coughs> RFP. Well, we have uh, evaluated our programming from last year when we had kind of a major shift to um, being responsible for students who did not pass I read three um, so we made adjustments in the RFP to reflect that but we would also um, like to continue the strengths that we have seen over the years with our partnership in sponsoring um, an Academy for reading and focusing on reading so um, we hope that the RFP reflects those items um, that maintain the strengths of the programming, but also would reflect a, a little more tighter focus on the IRE 3 piece that we have to deal with. Okay, do I have a motion to so accept the um, proposal? So move. <coughs> um, so, uh, moved by Pat Heine. Do I have a second? second and seconded by Aaron Stevens. Um, questions, comments? Pat? Uh, at the, uh, the last meeting, um, I had noticed the number 20, it, where it says students identified as still being deficient in phonics, phonemic awareness, and fluency will receive needed interventions. Uh, and I, I asked the question then, and I'm, so I saw it stayed the same. Are we responsible for the interventionists, or are they responsible, or because th that was unclear to me? And last year it seemed like we provided, didn't we provide the interventionists? We, we did provide that. <coughs> so is it? At the last year we had two interventionists, and it just allowed a little more isolated time. They do sure. differentiate at times, but um, I think um, it allows uh, <coughs> each uh, site to be able to focus in on those skills, and uh, we would like to continue that. 
Um, I couldn't tell from the proposal whether we were asking them to provide it or no. we were willing to provide it. No. Do those interventionists travel from site to site? They do travel um, and we'll work with uh, the, any, any proposal that we receive. But um, last year we had the interventionists at every site. Um, we'd like to narrow that down to maybe half to just get a little better um, focus for certain kids. And so therefore some coordination with students at, who end up at certain sites, but you know, that's to be determined. <clears throat> well, I also noticed that I think was different from last year was student academic needs will be taken into consideration almost group. Are you talking about actually grouping some with like needs, right. which would then lend that? Yes. Also, is is literacy only literacy done during that time or do they encompass other subject areas? In the past, most of the time has been spent on literacy, although um, going back before I read three, there also was some uh, time spent on language arts that had to do with um, skill sets that were evaluated under language arts and ISTEP, <coughs> specifically um, writing, um, writing um, being based on a rubric. So um, those are, I think, things that we'll have to reevaluate and, and last year um, we we did see some of that um, and so we would hope that uh, adjustments could be made where the focus is uh, on the reading um, I, I know you would think that it would be entirely on reading but I think also they were trying to meet needs as it related to the language arts and the I step so um, you know, I think we've communicated through this that we want that um, total focus on reading. <clears throat> uh, anyone else? Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Motion carried. Okay, we're ready for our 2020 vision. And on that piece, we're looking tonight to have an approval for the Hibbard parking area bid. Um, we talked about, we've been talking about that for a couple of meetings too, but we have a tabulation tonight. And I don't know if Mr. Coddington, yes. you're prepared to yes. deal with that? Okay. The phase two Hibbard parking uh, area project <laughs> bids were received on Thursday, February 7th. The notice to bidders was published in the Palladium item on January 23rd and January 30th. Proof of publication is on file at the business, in the business office. The receipt of bid sheet is enclosed for your information. All bids and bid documents also are on file. Therefore, it is recommended that phase two of the Hibbard parking area project bid is awarded to Smorelli <coughs> General Contractor of Richmond, Indiana at the low base bid of $163,500 plus alternate one for concrete steps in the amount of 14,000 and alternate bid two for the north parking area in the amount of 36,300 for a total of $213,800 meeting bid specifications as presented. This falls within our appropriated amount for 2013 <coughs> and uh, will bring us in uh, with a completed project uh, as desired. Mm -hmm. Okay, do I have a motion? Kelly Baumgartner makes the motion. Second by Dixie Robinson. Um, comments, questions? Uh, Aaron. Um, Bob, looking at all the bids, and, and they're relatively close, five, four or $5,000 each. However, with one, I just want clarification on Thor Construction for the ad alternate number two on that north parking lot. There's a 20 you know, a $20,000 difference. What what were they going to do uh, to the north parking lot? That a spec's a spec. Somebody read that spec and said, that's what it'll cost me to do it. And the other person read the spec and said, these two said, that's what I will do it. Hmm. So I found it interesting to see there's a $4,000 difference. You usually do not see that. Uh -huh. There's a $4,000 difference between <clears throat> the, two, the first and the second. However, $20,000 after that. So... Same Maybe the they were going bids. to have heated parking lots, you know. And <laughs> Would be nice. 
It wasn't expected. <laughs> that was my question. Okay, Dixie. I just wanted to know where the concrete steps are. The concrete steps are are not in More? yet. They're, they would go from the, um, the they would go end? down to the Ron Robinson Memorial from the upper oh. parking lot. Right? So visitors could, will go in the front, not the back end. Gotcha. Right now they can only basically. But they're not going to do anything with the north ones that go into the. Mm -mm. Out of the playground, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. No, that's not what this is about. Okay. This project. Okay. Anyone else? All those in. Well, I'm oh, sorry. go ahead, Jeff. Are we? Because I noticed that the entrance isn't completed yet. Are we starting construction on that then right away? When? When will construction start on the on this project? June the 3rd when school's out. We're going to open up that parking lot within the next couple, three weeks and finish the year with a formal entrance to the school. Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. The next item would be a project update. Mr. Mays. Thank you very much. To answer uh, Aaron's question, the contractor made a mistake on that portion of it and counted something twice. Oh. And so that, that's why they were that, that high. Unfortunately, it was in their bid, so. Right. I mean, if they would have been within the grouping there, they would have been low. Mm -hmm. But uh, they'd made a mistake. All right. Mm -hmm. Since we're talking about Hibbard, I'll, I'll stay on Hibbard. Uh, if you've been by, oh. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that picture was taken. I took that out of my out of my car today. <laughs> that's, that's surprising. A drive by. <laughs> As you can see, uh, we're we're coming along uh, tomorrow or Friday. They'll finish the uh, wall between the between the columns, and then uh, next week we have to put down the paving brick, and that's like putting ceramic tile in your house. And we need a control of the weather. So that we're going to spend a little extra money, $600 in fact, to put a, a Visqueen tent over that and put <coughs> some uh, heaters in there so that the days are warm but it's the nights that, that uh, get us. And that's why we've been so slow to where we are today. So I know each time I tell you, I give you a different date. <laughs> so they're telling me February the 22nd, which is a week from Monday, will be able to utilize that parking lots and the entrance since the pavers. That's the only thing that's holding us up right now are, are the pavers. I mean, it's, isn't it a week from yeah. Friday? But you have to visualize that between those two pillars will be a walk and then steps going up the upper parking lot. And then all that dirt will be dug out to your right. And, so and all that will cool. uh, take care of in, in the uh, uh, project that we were just talking about. We, to answer your question, Jeff, we, we talked to, uh, I talked to uh, um, Mrs. Gibbs, and that uh, we talked, we kicked around about starting since, since this was slowed up so much. And then uh, in talking with her, we figured out that it, we ought to at least use that until uh, school's out. And then uh, we have June the 3rd, and it has to be done by the third week of July so that uh, we can make those make those dates say if they would do it now they wouldn't be able to get the asphalt on anyway because it'd be too cold in april and may to give us the type of surface we want so uh i tried but we 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 said we'd probably be better off just waiting well i didn't know if it <coughs> since the north parking lot and the south parking lot aren't attached i didn't know maybe if we could start on the north now no. at uh at dennis we're uh in the process of painting the inside the the main gym area. The, uh, they're going to work uh, Saturday and Sunday in there. Uh, he was supposed to start Monday, and they really didn't get started till yesterday, and then they're back working again today. And so he's a couple days behind, so the painters agreed to go in and paint the, the ceiling structure on the inside Saturday and Sunday and complete the block fill on the walls. So uh, that puts us back on schedule. The permanent heat's going to be turned on Monday. Uh, the lights will be completed by uh, Monday night or Tuesday morning, and they're uh, delivering the wood floor material. It takes 30 days to do the wood floor, 
and so that uh, probably a week from Monday they'll be working on the wood wood floor to get us within that time frame because March is rolling around here pretty fast and we said we would be done the end of March so that when the students come back from spring break the gym will be will be completed so that's wow. and they're again they're right on they're right on their schedule great thank you anybody have any questions or comments <clears throat> mr. Mays okay we are ready to move on to our work session <clears throat> Okay, Res uh, re responding to the comments and the discussion that we had at our special work session um, a couple weeks ago, I would like to propose the following uh, this evening. <coughs> this hasn't changed from the first presentation or the first proposal that we had. This would be the Dennis Intermediate School project of $2 million. This project hasn't changed. Uh, we've defined it a few times. Uh, Mr. Mays is ready to give you details should you want to have another description of that project. But this one is the same one that's been on the table for uh, several weeks. Dr. Borf, yes. would you prefer for us to um, talk as we go? I would. You would? Please talk as we go. Okay. Yes. So, okay. so Dennis, anybody have any questions or comments or? Okay, it's a given. The Hibbard Building has an $800,000 price tag. This is more than we've seen. Uh, this project now includes the boiler, and the entire project has been increased due to some costs associated with retrofitting of equipment. This, is, um, this would entail the replacement of all the air handling units in the building, as well as putting a new boiler in. Um, we have had several problems with that system, and this would bring that up, up to date. So what does it mean, retrofitting? Well, it, it actually means putting, putting equipment into existing sites, uh, making sure that they're the mm -hmm. same sizes. They, in other words, you wouldn't be retooling any classrooms. You wouldn't be rearranging any classrooms where you have an air handling unit right now we would put one back in its place <coughs> it would just be new and fitted into that old old site um, this way we would we would not have to ask teachers to pack up their classrooms and move out while the ceiling grids are redone while the 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 rooms are are re rebuilt this would minimize any impact on that building so that is what is attributed to the um, uh, more cost? Yes. Uh, Mr. Mays uh, had to go back to the drawing board a bit, and would you like to talk about why this? Uh, it was primarily the boilers. We had the cost in there to uh, put the new unit ventilators and to rework the air handling units in the library and the office area, and it, in working with, uh, with Glenn, and the amount of times that he's had to try to fix the present boiler just this winter, that we felt that, that uh, since we're putting all new units in, we're reworking the water in the piping, that, that if we kept an old boiler, all the, all the rust and scaly parts of the boiler would get back in the system again. So it would be, a, it was, next year we'd have to replace the boiler anyway. So we felt that now is the time to do it. We also saved carpet because if the unit ventilators that fit on the floor are just a little bit smaller, we save carpet from the job that we can patch that back in and you'll never, you'll never see it. And just like Dr. Bohr said, the, the ceilings will be very minimal on what we do there. And so we'll leave the furniture in the classrooms, we won't move anything out, we'll just be working on the HVAC units. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Another way of looking at it, excuse me, is we've taken the boiler from a contingency. Right. 
into the project. It okay. was if the boiler was always in the in the numbers, but it was a contingency. I just think it's important for us and the taxpayers to know if there's a difference in cost as to why that difference <coughs> is appearing. So um, thank you for that. And Jeff, I, my, I guess my question has more to do with the process and the goal of this work session tonight. Um, by us modifying, I mean, your total proposal is, is modified quite a bit from our original proposal. Correct. So I, I guess <coughs> tonight we're here more to hear the explanation for the proposal and the individual projects because do we not do do we have to go back to project hearings for every, I guess you, I'm trying to figure out you do my role tonight in you do <coughs> and what Mr. Cross can uh, explain to you what we'll need to be doing uh, on the legal side. Uh, assuming that you have that you come to some kind of consensus on the proposal that's before you in this work session if you feel that this is uh, a proposal you can live with and you would like to move it to the next level then we're prepared to talk to you tonight about the hearings that are necessary on this particular set of uh, proposals well maybe we need to back up a little bit and um, maybe you need to explain what ha has happened since our meeting of two weeks ago, or la yeah, two weeks ago, I guess, um, because the amount of the bond issue has risen mm -hmm. um, be because of what. Well, we let me let me do this. Or do you have that in there somewhere? It is in Am here. I just ahead? It, you're you're ahead, but that's okay oh. because we can. What we can do is go to the very end and then go back. I'm just trying to make sure that I understand what what you you're wanting out of this work session from us. And I would assume they they need to hear whether we feel those costs and those projects are justified put in in so it's not just the money it is okay philosophically are we justifying can we justify each of those particular things so I assume you need they need to hear that from us wouldn't you think okay aren't these projects all the same projects we've just shifted them around based on our conversation last part, time yes. where we said mm -hmm. we want to retain the 10 cents is fine shorten the term and based on that, now we have some money, to, different money to work with. And so you've shifted the projects around, prioritized. These are not different projects. Correct. Okay. It's, it's, a, it's a different proposal. They're all, they've all been on the you've heard, you've heard in bits and pieces before. they have yeah. been. Yeah, you've They're heard everything the before in, in different places, right. different mm -hmm. parts. Uh, but you haven't seen them put together quite like this. And the reason <laughs> they are put together like this, as I said, I responded to what I heard at exactly. the last meeting. In the last meeting, you heard me say I was proposing a particular group of projects to stay within the 2013 tax rate. Right. You also heard me say that in order to do what I was proposing, it would take a 10-year uh, bond issue. And so what we've done, we've scaled back the bond issue to a six-year. But what I heard at the last meeting was come back with a project proposal that would live within the tax rate that we had as of December, which is what you were working with in December. And so that's what we've, that's what we've done. Um, and if you follow along here, you'll see the list, the list of projects is completely, should be very familiar, yeah. but they have been packaged a little differently. For example, the Dennis project, like I said, same one. The Hibbard project comes with a boiler mm -hmm. this time, Hold so it's more than what out. you saw the last mm -hmm. time. The boiler was in our contingency list. Mm -hmm. The Vail project is basically the same. Technology, if you recall, has been at different levels. What we've done, we've looked at technology, and remember, we're not necessarily advocating technology, a uh, technology expansion, what we're doing is wanting to bond the dollars that would normally go to technology in the CPF, uh, the Capital Projects Fund. <coughs> and that flexibility thereby established in the technology 
or in the CPF fund would enable us to do projects such as the C.R. Richardson building, which you've seen before. Uh, down the road, if we had to do a maintenance project on Dennis, we would have that built into it. So that's why the technology piece looks a little different. In the Charles, on the Charles line, that's a lot less than we were talking about in December because we're not talking about any addition to that building. We are still talking about a fairly thorough renovation of four classrooms that escaped renovation the last time the building was renovated. And there are some funds built in to enable us to do some, some flooring work mm -hmm. throughout the building. Uh, could be some, some, wall, uh, some wall covering. But basically, it's the renovation of those four classrooms and an additional uh, parking lot where we have right now on the east side of the building some uh, uh, basketball goals. The Charles renovation would not give us the, the room we need to establish preschool and to move students out of the art, the art room. So what we're looking at doing is to take the high ability classrooms, and this has also been on the table before. It was on the table last year when we were doing the master plan. Taking the high ability classes in the second, third, and fourth grade, or perhaps just the third and fourth grade, moving those to the Hibbard building where there is sufficient space and where there is programming consistent with that type of programming in the intermediate levels. We would move them, uh, those classes down there creating some space in Charles for the preschool, also for uh, move, movement back into the art room of the art classroom, classes. So, and we might even have one other room made available through this, depending on two, two or three, three classrooms uh, being moved there. So we could accommodate the student enrollment needs at Charles, we could also accommodate what it is they need to have done in that building right now, and we could save the expansion of Charles for a later time when we're looking at it in an entirely different lens. The Fairview project is fairly consistent with what we've seen. It's a little lower because we've, we've done a, another examination of that project, and we think that we can do that at a lower cost because we're looking at humidity control that can be done at a lower cost than uh, completely redoing all the HVAC in that, in that building. We are still talking about replacing some of the units, however. Was Fairview, um, help remind me, was Fairview on the original plan or is it a it contingency? Was, I think it was on the contingency list. Contingency. <clears throat> in Westview, that's an expansion uh, of what you've seen on the main bond issue. Uh, because we had some of that in contingency the last time. This includes a roofing project. The roofing project was on contingency the last time. So you have a slightly bigger, bigger uh, project there for Westview. It includes some HVAC. It includes probably some new piping because we're talking about a long span down to the mm -hmm. kindergarten classrooms and redoing some of the uh, heating and air conditioning there. But Basically, the, the, the reason there is such a uh, greater amount would be for the, because the roofing has been added, added into the, the total. <coughs> Any questions on that one? At Richmond High School, you've seen that one before, too. Uh, that's been taken off. It's been put back on now. It's been put on contingency, and now we have it back. It has to do with bleachers and the football field. Uh, the bleachers would include... Uh, demolition of the bleachers that are now the old uh, grandstand area with press box. We would have to have a new press box constructed. And this includes uh, additional work on the track to bring it back up to standards. And it would include artificial turf on the football field, making it much more usable during the school year to a variety of uh, uh, school activities. The total cost is $7,750,000. That's lower than the 800000 that we <coughs> talked about in December, and that's why we can stay under, by almost a penny, uh, the tax rate that we established back in December. 
or had established back in December. Questions on that? On the, you keep saying about the track about, are you gonna actually resurface it? Well, I can't <coughs> answer how extensive that is. Mr. Mays, questions on the track? Okay, uh, answer your question, yes. We're going to uh, rebuild, rebuild the track <coughs> and that uh, <coughs> because we will expand the uh, football field to allow for soccer, which takes a bigger area. Uh, so we will then expand the track. And, and what our schedule is, is to uh, move the bleachers, uh, do the football field this summer, and then do the track uh, next summer. And uh, Chad's uh, been making arrangements with Earlham uh, to use their track maybe uh, next spring. Now, what kind of equipment do you need for the maintenance of AstroTurf? Okay, the, the maintenance, uh, it, it, it just takes, there's, there's little pebbles of rubber in there in, mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the grass that, that gives you your, your, your uh, feel of, of real turf. And uh, what they have to do is uh, three or four times a year, uh, they just go in there and they have a machine that just uh, rakes it and it costs about uh, uh, $20 a time that, that they do it. it and, and our people would do it. We would have the equipment to do it. That's the only maintenance that that uh, facility takes versus going in and painting it and striping it and, and putting, cutting the grass and, and putting uh, water on it. Mm -hmm. uh, there's an estimate that uh, Center Grove mm -hmm. uh, did was $27,000 a year Mm -hmm. is what it costs them to maintain their, dra their <clears throat> grass field. So by putting the, the turf, the artificial turf, now, now we don't have to go to Freeman Park where we cut it, where we line it, uh, seed it, and, and we don't have that field to take care of because we'll be bringing the uh, soccer back uh, to the high school. Right now, uh, as you know, that, that last fall we had a nice rain every Friday night <laughs> which they canceled games and, and it was a mud hole and that uh, we could only maybe play one game one game a week but uh, what we're looking at at now and these are these are staggering numbers that uh, and this is without practice this is just games that in a, a artificial turf in a year uh, from uh, March to November we would uh, have uh, 342 hours of, of use and what that is, is that the boys and girls soccer would have uh, almost 75 hours. This is just games, not practice. The uh, football uh, would have uh, about the same amount, both varsity and, and JV. The band would have 20 hours. For state fair would have 20 hours, and that's, that doesn't count the uh, three times a week that the band goes on there in, in practice. PE classes is, is, a big, is a big thing. Last year, uh, because all the fields were full of, uh, of mud, that they, they could have used the artificial turf. We figured that they'll be from 96 to over 100 hours for PE usage. And that uh, what they found out that uh, over the uh, years, that it's used like Tiernan Center, seven days a week, uh, Sundays. They have, they have games out there on Sundays. So we would have a, a high usage. So if you look at a minimal of 342 hours on the artificial mm -hmm. turf, we're only able to get 67 hours on grass because we can't have soccer, we can't have band. Band does not practice on that field and that uh, we cannot have PE at all uh, or they do, and they don't practice on the field for the state fair contest either. Mm -hmm. So this would really enhance the use of, of the facility. How long does it last? That's a good question. On, uh, uh, we, we've taken a survey. They once, uh, they meaning the manufacturers, had said they would guarantee it for 10 years. So when I told that to Bob, he just stood up straight because replace another in 10 years, we can't, we can't afford that, which is true. Yeah. So we contacted uh, three schools in Indiana that were one of the first ones to use the, the turf. Uh, Lafayette Jeff was, was one. Uh, they've had theirs on for nine years, and they're going to. They said they, they're going to get another five years use out of it. Then they're going to take that off of the field, 
and put it on their practice fields and get another 10 years <coughs> use out of that when they put the new one on, on the main field. Now, we're looking at about half the cost when you're only replacing the, yeah, uh, the astroturf. Have to prepare. Uh, Homestead, uh, they, did, they did the same thing, and, there's, and they use theirs seven days a week, March through November, and that uh, uh, they've had theirs down since 2003, and they feel they can get another uh, eight years out of theirs. They, they, what reason why they were <coughs> able to do this is because the, the first uh, fields that they have did not have UV protection. But now the, the second generation of, of this material, they have UV protection, and that's the only thing that really breaks down the, the fibers. Well, and then uh, Homestead, uh, which is another one, uh, they, they've had 10 years out of theirs, and that uh, they're not even looking at, at replacing it, or I mean, um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Center Grove. They, they are going to replace theirs only after 10 years, but not because it's worn out. They want to take it and put it on some practice fields and then put the new one on the main field instead of putting the, a new one on the, on the practice fields. But uh, they were the first, uh, Center Grove, Lafayette, and Homestead were the first schools in Indiana to really use the, the, uh, the AstroTurf. Well, I have one more question, then I'll have to uh, AstroTurf, I know, holds more heat than natural <coughs> turf. So does that create a problem when our field, that's when it's used the most, is in the hottest months? They, that was a question that was asked them, and they didn't uh, feel that it held uh, that much more heat that, that it concerned them. They did find, though, that, that uh, injuries on AstroTurf uh, is is about the same as regular grass, except the injuries aren't as severe because it's a softer material. It's not like uh, years ago when it first came out and people were breaking uh, knees and legs and, it's and a whole everything falling on it. But now it's, it it's rebuilt. It's if you want to see what it looks like, uh, uh, we can go to Earlham, yeah. Earlham's football field, and. Uh, I think it's today really nice. they, they've started work on their baseball diamond and they're going to put the same material mm -hmm. on, their, uh, on their baseball diamond. Kelly, did you? No, he answered it. It was about soccer and moving the game. Oh, so. What's going to happen with the practice fields? The, okay. Or the practice field there? It, uh, right now, Chad would like to uh, just get some through. kind of a fundraiser it's and try to get community support to help fund a practice area that not only sports could use, but again, the PE classes could use, similar to what they've done in other other communities. Because is that going to present a problem? No. If no. Going from one to the other. Mm -hmm. So still, the same number of um, students will be able to utilize. Absolutely. Without Absolutely. without the. You know, if the absolutely, front if, if if you walk over there <coughs> uh, in the in the daytime, the grass turf field is not used at all because mm -hmm. they can't get on it. But now, when we put the artificial turf, every gym class will be able to get on it and play football, soccer, whatever. It, the, because you use it more, it doesn't hurt it; it helps it. And so, the more you use it, the better off better off you are so well what I'm thinking of I know that the practice field is kind oh. of reserved for our football they'll be practicing no they'll be that, that's that's not in my numbers the football team will be practicing on the artificial turf okay that's what I yes. was wondering yes so that, yes they will same be practicing. With soccer yes well soccer they're talking about um, uh, there's a group that that's going to the um, uh, state hospital uh, area and and rework their fields for their soccer programs plus maybe the high school might practice on that area but their games their soccer games would would be at, at the high school mm -hmm. we'd only be limited by the by the scheduling at but this point hours in the yeah. day really mm -hmm. Good. are we going to build a storage facility too with this it, well part of the part of the program is is taking down the cement bleachers and then to <coughs> rebuild 
a, a storage facility on the site there. There's, they've also talked about where the uh, taking the visitors and, and reducing the size of that to maybe three or four hundred or five hundred seats, which is what we have in visitors. So that concession stand that that the uh, uh, department, the school department built, their uh, building trades built. We're looking at expanding that and and put storage in there because we won't need it as a concession stand. And what we want to do is when we do that, we want to brick the outside of that because we want all of the buildings. We want to create an image there. I mean, we have thousands of people that go in Tiernan Center, they go in the football field, they go in Civic Hall, and we want to show them our best foot forward on what Richmond Community Schools has to offer. And that's what everybody, they don't see classrooms, they don't see other areas, but that's the image of the school corporation and, and this is what uh, Kokomo, uh, mm -hmm. Kokomo put a, a, a fence, a wrought iron fence around their football field <coughs> and brick pillars. And uh, it's, it's beautiful up there, new entrance, because that's the image that they want to project of Kokomo uh, schools. Nice. So in short, we're going to have a storage facility built right onto the concession stand. And it's going to be big enough to house all the mowers and no 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 just maybe hurdles and things like that we will build a storage facility <laughs> to put the tractors in and and uh, the maintenance equipment that the high school needs to mow the mow the grass and everything it 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 uh, will be about the same size that's underneath the bleachers now the cement bleachers that we have we're only able to use a third of that space anyway because the rest of it is uh, just leaks water and, and they can't use it for, for storage. But we will at least duplicate what we have there and we have $150,000 in our budget uh, to do that. So roughly 5,000 square feet? That's something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So AstroTurf at the high school, um, the track is going to be rebuilt yes and the bleachers right. and storage will we've be. been talking to a company that can come in and and dismantle sections of the bleachers and then move them on to the uh, west side reassemble them and that we would have to then build a a press box uh, elevated uh, behind the, the bleachers so uh, what you would see, which has been very difficult for the school corporation, for the teams, to have your home uh, fans on the opposite side because your cheerleaders aren't over there, your band's not over there. So now we're bringing all the home on one side and just putting the visitors on the other side with the bleachers that we have. We're not adding any new bleachers at all. You would see fewer bleachers on the east side. Yeah. Yes. So it would change yes. the profile from Hubbetchison Parkway, mm -hmm. as you're okay. looking into the football. Nice. We're going to replace the fence too. Well, in time. We will. Yeah. Yes. In time. Yes. That again. That's part of maybe a fundraiser, of beautifying that area from from the Civic Hall all the way around to Hubbetches and Parkway, all the way south to the curve, uh, as as the the first phase. But, and Suzanne mentioned the tennis courts, but that's not part of the plan either. That is not part of this project at, at this time. Will the uh, softball diamond also be included in the, what perhaps the fundraiser? What Chad, what Chad would like <laughs> to do in the softball diamond is that he wants to move all of his baseball programs to McBride Stadium and, and move the softball diamond to the first diamond uh, south of McBride Stadium and use the locker rooms and everything, <coughs> the facilities at McBride Stadium so we can have <coughs> softball and baseball at, at McBride Stadium. Because, because they almost have to start from scratch every year in, in their, from football practice, gym classes, and everything on their existing softball. Well, I mean, Mike knows what he had to go through to maintain the space <laughs> that you're given to make it a, an, a, a playable field. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Thanks. Pat. Uh, <coughs> I wasn't able to attend the January 30th meeting, but I did listen to <coughs> the tape discussion. 
And first of all, I want to say to the board, I appreciate the questions and I especially appreciated Suzanne getting us honed in on the three questions. And as I received your proposal and listened to the conversation, I thought what you did was meet the needs of the infrastructure needs that are most pressing right now. And this proposal made a lot of sense to me. And the, the larger amount of money at Hibbard just made sense because if you're going to have to do a boiler one year, you might as well do it now and we're going to be using that building more and more and more and more. Why not have it ready to go? And so all of the other projects seem to me to make s sense but also connect to the conversation that I heard taped and I trust that I didn't miss any of the nuances or the I other think things this, that this proposal puts us at a point where we can start looking ahead. Yeah. Uh, we are we are bringing our facilities to a point where uh, we can start looking beyond in terms of programming as well as facilities. Facilities should mirror your the programming, programming. Mm -hmm. uh, goals. Well, and as and we talk right about now, programs we later have so today. many building issues that we yeah. need to uh, take care of. This should put us in pretty good. Uh, Seemed like it met lots of the infrastructure <laughs> needs that we've Does. been looking at the last few years. Dixie, you have a question? Yeah, I had one other question. We have four elementary buildings up there um, with their air quality being taken care of. And there's two that's missing. Now, Crestdale was just renovated. Do they have is that taken care of already? Well, or time will tell. Star? We've we've put a new system in there, and we don't know that there will be any problems, <coughs> but we're watching that. STAR has been renovated with that in mind. Uh, we've been told that there <coughs> are from time to time some issues there, but that's one of the reasons that we're building this flexibility into that <coughs> technology bond. I mean, we're building flexibility in our CPF through that technology component to meet challenges like that that may arise. I mean, we can't say right now what might pop up in the way of costs. That would be, that would be a, a, an example. But we also have issues at the high school. Mm -hmm. We, we mm -hmm. uh, you know, who knows? And at, at test and wouldn't expect much from test and dentist, but you never know. But STAR was renovated to fix the humidity controls a couple years ago. Correct. Right? Mm -hmm. so That's that what I said. In the last three. Yeah, so yeah. the humidity controls at STAR, I mean, to answer okay. your question, as far as we know, has been fixed. <coughs> okay. We, uh, we occasionally have some, some issues there, and we deal with those. But we don't expect major, major problems there for humidity control. And the, at Crestdale, it's an, and it's an entirely new system. Time will tell whether we have issues there, but we haven't uh, gone through a full cycle to know. But we don't have humidity control in place currently at uh, Crestdale. Crestdale. Yeah. So we what, what we, what we want to do, <coughs> we don't want to jump in and spend three or four hundred thousand uh, dollars on a, a project we think we might have humidity problems. What we want to do is uh, this spring as we want to study those those buildings and again a lot depends upon this spring may be different than next spring or, or last spring but we want to look at, at how we're cleaning everything in the summertime how we're shutting things up maybe we keep it more open in the <coughs> school maybe we keep some some systems running in the school and then look and see what happens this fall after we go through that cycle because everybody says we have a humidity problem but we're not sure we really do in some buildings Veil, because it's a two-story building, is different humidity problem than what Westview is because it's a one-story building. But we just want to look at those and just see what we need to do so that we, we, do, it, we do it right and, and, and we don't ever have to talk about humidity again. <laughs> so are we, thinking then of, are we thinking then of pushing all of those projects off until the next summer? Next summer. That, that's what we're looking at, yes. Mm -hmm. So this summer you're looking at... Dennis and Hibbard. Dennis, Hibbard, the high school, and Charles. Then you'll do. <coughs> Next summer, we'll look at, at all the heating, cooling, and humidity problems in the, in the various schools. At Westview, uh, we will probably put 
uh, a roof on. We, we, need a, we need a roof there, and that's part of the project. And, uh, but other than that, the rest of that will be done, be done next, next year. And, and when we're looking at Charles, um, we, we bumped that up, you could see, to, to a half a million. Well, uh, by the time we, we get fees and, and, and reimbursables and everything out of there, we really have $481,000 to work with. It looks like the addition, or not the addition, but the re renovation of those four classrooms it's going to be maybe 179 or 80 thousand dollars. So the rest of that money then will also be used for looking at humidity control. But it may not do it until next year. Some when we talk to some staff members, the four rooms that we're, we're renovating are the only ones they've had humidity problems in. If you talk to somebody else, <laughs> well, we're okay in our in our classes. So that's what we that's what we want to try to narrow down. Just. What kind of a problem do we really have? Are we changing the piping that Charles doesn't need at all? Because I thought the unit ventilators were only like 10 or 12 years. We're not replacing those, are we? No, no. Those those four unit ventilators were replaced when we renovated right, the first time. Yeah. The only thing that, that we didn't do there, and it's a good thing we didn't, because we were going to change some configuration of those four classrooms and make a uh, one one area that you could put two classes in it and make it more like a, like a lecture area. Well. We need those four classrooms, so we're going back to the four classrooms that, that's there. It just seemed two hundred thousand dollars to renovate four classrooms if we're not replacing those ventilators. Just seems a little high. So. Well, and we're going to do a lot of the work ourselves. <clears throat> You're right. You're right. And and we're going to do a lot. And of work the parking. Ourselves. Don't but forget I mean, the we're parking. Talking parking is in that too. New <coughs> casework, new carpeting, new lighting, energy efficient lighting. <coughs> paint. But you're going to change all the. You're going to do all the hallways and put in all the new flooring in all the hallways. As we can, as that's if, right. still if doing the, the cost canopy comes outside in. for the, the entranceway as well. Is the canopy included in that? Yes, it is. Okay. It is. There is a canopy. Canopy, included. parking lot. The goal in the parking lot is to make it big enough that we don't have any uh, on street parking. Oh, they need the parking lot. That's for, for staff. Sure. You mean? And the canopy yeah, so the staff, students yeah. can get in without getting wet. That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. Uh, so I guess my, my question that I. Uh, it probably goes to the Ron and, and Alan discussion of timing because you just said a number of projects need to be done in the summer mm -hmm. and to do that I mean we're backing up pretty close so is that the next part of this conversation it is. the timing so that we can get that started I just wanted to call something to the public's attention we uh, under consent items we're going to have a filing of report from athletics and in last school year, 614 kids participated in athletics. Now, they wouldn't all be on the field at the same time, but when we think about spending money <coughs> at the high school to reach kids, uh, the athletic department and whatever we can do to enhance that really makes a lot of sense. So from the board standpoint I guess what we need to do now it's is uh, we need to to give direction and um, Jeff did you have something well I, I guess you know we're kind of some of these like like we were told some of these projects are the same some of them have been modified and added um, the technology piece for the 1.75 is one that we really that's the only one that I really have con some concerns about. I mean, I can see the support and the need to support a lot of these other projects, but so I, I guess, and I'm not really, we can debate it or not, it doesn't matter, but I guess I'm just kind of understanding in the process. Um, I'm not comfortable with the 1.75 for the technology because to me, I, I still look at that. Um, we have a rainy day fund. So to me, that is our contingency money. I, 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 this technology is not enhancing our technology services for our children at all. This is nothing but, in my opinion, um, providing the flexibility. It's a creating a savings account. You know, so we're going to go back to the taxpayers and ask them to pay interest to create a savings account. And <coughs> if you agree or disagree with my logic, that's where I'm at. So we kind of have a rainy day fund that I kind of look at 
that is our contingency fund. So, you know, if if our contingency um, out of that total, so I, I guess we're, where we debate and talk about the, you know, whether we agree or not or agree with the technology, that's the only one that I really personally would want to, to discuss. So, and that could be done at a hearing or public hearing or, or uh, it, it, <clears throat> but I just think that's something that needs to be discussed. Suzanne. The thing is about the, um, uh, I hear what you're saying about the rainy day, but there's no way to create new money in the rainy day for these mm -hmm. projects that we know mm -hmm. that are on the contingency list still mm -hmm. or that we know are sort of hovering <coughs> over there. And so isn't that kind of the difference? Because there's really not a, I mean, this is an opportunity for us to take advantage of a tool that's available to us, but there, the rainy day is only, we can only put money in. <coughs> Where does that money come from for those possible mm -hmm. projects if we well, don't do this? I, I, I guess I kind of look at when we're bonding a project. I, I think when we're bonding projects, I think we should have particular projects in mind. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we're not really... You know, the presentations that we've received, we could do this or we could do that. I mean, we don't have anything, or for one, <coughs> we don't know what kind of emergency or non-emergency will occur. But there's so, more left on the mm, list, right? I mean, there's but, more contingencies on our list that we know are going to come up. They didn't make this chart, but they're still there. Well, then, not, then I, I guess, I guess that becomes the difference in philosophy. So if we have contingencies that are what I call priorities that we're going to have to do, then we should name those projects and do them. Um, that's just my feeling and my thought. I, 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 just, I just really have a concern, try, you know, borrowing money to put it out there for six years and say these are to cover our what ifs. Well, you know, we have other mechanisms out there to cover our what ifs. I mean, we we receive property tax. We we have a capital projects fund. We have, rain, but those are spoken fund. for mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, the rainy day fund is it? But the, where is that money? At at one point, and I'm not I'm not trying to argue with this, but I do have a whole case to counter what you've said. Um, but I'll just take that rainy day fund. We have spent the rainy day fund that we said we would spend for facilities. The rest of that we have said, we have, we have even um, committed to the teachers that we would keep that rainy day fund for cash flow and for possible use for salaries and benefits at, at some point. Now we've also said that until that goes over the 8% that we feel comfortable with, we can't really talk about that. So as you're looking at using rainy day funds for additional facility renovations, you really run very close to bringing that below the 8% that we committed to the teachers and, and, the, and the community to try to maintain. Well, that, uh, well, we could, we could have a long conversation about this because I, I don't know that I agree with some of the stuff that you just said, but, but uh, I, I was just trying to put out there kind of where I'm at. So I think that's <coughs> what we need to have some discussion about. Yeah, we're right. Thank you. Pat, I looked at the technology from the same perspective, not from the funding, but from the same perspective as putting heating and ventilating in. Technology to me today is as m important an infrastructure as anything else that we can put up there. So I can justify that using it in the bond as I can justify the other projects because it is basically infrastructure for because if we don't pay attention to technology and so I didn't even look at how we might fund other contingencies and know what we are going on I want the capital projects flexibility to deal with programming we just visited this wonderful school in Kokomo we just may have a you know all sorts of other things I hate to hem us in when we could use a bond to pay for infrastructure and that's, that's my approach and philosophy and why I would be very supportive of this approach. Could I counter that? Okay. <laughs> um, Dixie. Well, and I was just going to say on the rainy day fund that I'm getting, I, I mean, I think it's 
I'm getting nervous that we don't spend it down because there's so many things out there right oh. now that are just hanging unknowns. And, and, um, and that money may be vitally needed. I mean, we this, right now you don't know what's going on at the federal government, the state government right. funding, mm -hmm. the what we can get here locally, uh, what may happen with various projects and things yeah. that we're looking at. So um, I, I just think that's something that we need to be very protective. I think I would agree. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, well, I appreciate all the diverse <coughs> thinking and um, I guess what we need to uh, agree on right now <laughs> is uh, if we go ahead and hear as to what our next steps right. are. Is everybody willing? Mm -hmm. Or Jeff, did you want oh, no, to? No, 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 I'm good with that. Okay. I mean, I just, uh, okay. we would need to have the discussion, so. Sure, appreciate that. So, um, so let's. Um, well, there was a question earlier about uh, hearings. Uh, what, what would be necessary in the way of hearings? And I know that Mr. Cross has had some conversation with some of our uh, bond council and, and others. He's prepared to talk about what we might need to do if we want to go forward with this list as presented tonight. Well, yeah, I think a lot depends on what the board desires, but I can tell you one thing for certain. We have to have a 1028 hearing for the Richmond High School project because it was not part and parcel right. of the 1028 hearings that we had last month. With that said, we could probably incorporate that because it, there's nothing new in it, uh, we could probably incorporate that in our timeline that will develop. Frankly, we've been on hold. We can't do much because the variable document, if you will, for the financing is the lease, and we couldn't make any, we couldn't have a hearing on the lease if we didn't know the term of the lease, which is, i.e., the term of the bonds, and we didn't really know the amount of the lease payments, which is a function of the amount of the bond issue. So we've been on hold literally for the last month. Uh, that being said, there is some potential to compress the time frame. We do not have to have, in a legal sense, 1028 hearings for any of the other projects. However, if the board feels more comfortable doing that because of the different tax rate impact that the projects might have had, uh, then that's up to the board. By, by way of example, even though there's been no change in the project at Dennis, the original tax rate impact was about a, a one and one half cents. We've gone to about two and a half cents. So that's uh, Hibbard, we went from about a half a cent to just about a penny. Vale, we went from a third of a cent to about a half a cent. Charles, we went from a penny down to about two-thirds of, of a penny. Fairview wasn't in the mix, but we've added about a third of a cent to the aggregate tax rate impact. And Westview, we've gone from about a third to just under nine-tenths of a so. Those are your, and, and then of course Richmond High School was not in, and it's about a one and a half cents on the tax rate, and technology's gone from about eight tenths of a cent to two cents. So, uh, so what would you advise? What's, if you feel that the com that, that the public has had an adequate opportunity to have input on all the issues that are involved, because as <laughs> as you as we pointed out, you can d disagree with whether the matters ought to be funded this way or that way whether you know something ought to be immediate versus a, a long-range contingency there really hadn't been anything new added okay we've just repackaged that which was identified really al almost at the first meeting mm -hmm. uh, if you're comfortable with that bond council is very comfortable with saying the only 1028 hearing we have to have is the richmond high school project and we can incorporate that in our timeline going forward probably combine that 1028 with the hearing on the lease when that'll happen i can't tell you because until you board made a decision i basically put everybody on hold saying there's no point in burning time, burning money, until mm -hmm. we know what we, A, what the project is, B, what the amount of the bonds are going to be, and C, what the term of the bonds was going to be. Can we... Okay, what's uh, the will of the board? Yeah, can we, um, I don't know, it, is it <coughs> call for a vote? Do we move, how do we proceed moving it forward? Because um, I'm prepared to Well, I mean, I think you ought to at least talk about to. whether you feel comfortable that the public has been given an adequate opportunity to discuss the variables between the project that went to public here, the projects that went to 1028 hearings and those that are redefined under the proposal you have from the administration. If you feel like the, this, the difference is not in, in the aggregate significant on any of them except Richmond High School, which we have to have, that's, that's sure. off the board, 
uh, it's, a, it's a requirement because we're spending more than a million dollars. And new projects that are under a million do not require a 1028 hearing. But the, that doesn't mean you can't have one if, if the board feels like it's the proper thing to do. Sure. So the discussion that we need to have right now is how do you feel about um, the 1028 <coughs> hearings? Should we just do the high school? Or do you think that we should have hearings for all the projects again? Pat? I would say just the high school. I think the January 30th meeting, as, w as it was well organized, really gave the public lots of opportunity to put to give us lots of insight. And I thought the board responded to that very well. So I would, my, what, maybe not vote, but <laughs> my. Okay, Aaron. I, I'm, <clears throat> I support that also. I would like to move ahead with the projects as they're presented and have the 1028. I think that the, the public has had a uh, sufficient amount of time over the last month, whether it be the January 23rd or the January 30th meeting or the meeting prior to those two dates mm -hmm. to come and have input to uh, meet with us, to have public comment, uh, and especially to have have direct input at our January 30th meeting. So Well, and certainly we invite the public mm -hmm. to come to our meetings, and we have an opportunity at the beginning of our meetings and to... Uh, and there was a huge public. headline today that said we were going to talk about this right. tonight. And we did have, in December, we had one in the lobby. We had one over at Dennis. We had had the one here on the 30th, and plus we've had our regular board meetings to discuss it, too. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, anybody else? Dixie, do you have any comments? Well, the only thing I was going to ask was about the technology, because it's more than doubled. And if you remember on the, on the uh, contingency list, we had a maintenance project that we were, we were looking at at Dennis. Um, may or may not be an issue, but we wanted to make sure that that was included. C.R. Richardson, if we use that building again, would require some work. Mm -hmm. I'm just talking about a hearing. Why don't you have to have a when originally it was 700,000 and now it's... It was a million so one was a million. originally. Pardon me? It was a million one originally. Okay. So do we need to, we don't need to have a... Okay. Because it's under two million. Or, but if, if we feel as though that we should have a hearing on that one also, that would that be appropriate to have, have two of them that we would have a public hearing on? If you do that, yes. then you almost need to do Dennis and. Well, I, I guess I my. Well, it didn't change, though. Well, the yes. amount I, did not change I'm, on I'm, Dennis. I'm surprised about it substantially changed in the fact that it increased the tax rate. So, whether, you know, we all agree that the high school needs to go to the public hearing, but I'm, I'm surprised that the technology in the Dennis was advertised at a rate, at a certain tax rate. So. You know, if council says that we don't need to do those two, that those because of the sum of being over a million dollars, that's my only concern. Did we change it substantially enough that it warrants the public to have the opportunity to have a hearing? If council says we didn't, then I'm okay with that. However, there'll be a public meeting, and there will be opportunity Except for public commentary. It okay, just won't be the official 1028 hearing, which we have to have on on the other thing. I mean, nobody's going to keep people from talking. Well, and honestly, um, the public that um, that attended our mm -hmm. first hearing, their comments were based on the number of years exactly. that we were taking the bond issue for and also on the Charles expansion. Mm -hmm. And um, so those. those were where we got the most of our comments. Mm -hmm. So, um, so what are your wishes? I say move forward with the 1028 mm -hmm. on the high school as necessary, and I'm ready to do whatever it is you need to <coughs> do to move the rest of this stuff forward. I think um, we've had that. plenty of time. Mm -hmm. um, we're never, a motion. we can't recreate this wheel anymore. I think we need to move forward. <laughs> That's in the form of a motion. <laughs> okay. If you want me to make a motion, I would be glad to do that. I move that we proceed with the projects as presented um, by the administration and proceed with the uh, official hearing that's necessary for the high school. 
Okay, a motion made by Suzanne Derengowski. Second. Do I have a second? Pat? Seconded. Um, comments and questions? Well, my question is, to me, just like I said at the last board meeting, it's the individual, it, the rate and the term wasn't so much the issue as for me to support the individual projects. So are we voting? Is this motion for us to vote and approve on every one of the projects? Because we will no longer have an individual vote on a project. No, you'll have project it, resolutions for all that are over one million. This is for the 1028 This is just to, to give proceed. us a direction as to how to proceed. Mm -hmm. Giving them the opportunity to go forward. And we, I think we, while I know there's been some commentary about the changing uh, project list or whatever, to me, we did exactly what we said we were gonna do, is we brought it out to the public, we took input, we made changes, we made adjustments, and now I think we've arrived at a list that we can live with, and um, now Any we need to Any other comments forward. or questions? Here, here, I agree. <laughs> okay, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. So the next steps will be, and I'll get a timeline in front of you, <coughs> and obviously the bond council tries to work with the scheduled meetings of the board, uh, and I, I hope that will continue to be the pattern. If it, I don't foresee a special meeting necessary. But we will, you know, you'll recall at the end of the 1028 hearing, we had project resolutions prepared under the prior ones. We'll have to redo those based upon, the, as Jeff points out, the revised scopes of all the projects, literally, as it relates to... Uh, even tax rate impact of the projects that did not have any uh, substantive change in the scope. And uh, those project resolutions will be adopted at a public hearing, uh, at a public meeting, and they can, that can be pre preceded by such hearing uh, <coughs> as the board wishes to allow the public to have at any point in time. It's sure. not a legal requirement, but, you know, if, you, if, if that be the, the uh, pleasure of the board, <coughs> that can be done. After you adopt the... Uh, project resolutions we will be working on from tomorrow forward uh, the actual terms of the lease con will convene a meeting of the holding corporation board of directors we established a new holding corporation uh, they will review the lease and, and make appropriate recommendations and we'll go forward so uh, I guess the next thing you'll see will be a modified timeline because the one we were working under obviously is is no longer valid and you feel like we can still compact it and get things accomplished in the time we need to uh, I don't want to speak for Mr. No, but May's I mean as far as getting... Yes. Mm -hmm. As the, I understand it, uh, we've begun working with an architect, and you'll have an architectural contract coming to you at some point in time. Okay. Uh, and again, the risk we were running was the front-end expenses attended to dentists are primarily design engineering. And if you did nothing, then I think Bob's getting that money from some one of, of his sleeve, either the capital <laughs> projects fund or the rainy day fund uh, owner whatever it was that? Well, but, <laughs> but if, you, if you've done nothing solution. that money would have been at risk we would own the plans but the money would have been at risk but you did adopt a re reimbursement resolution right. last right. meeting mm -hmm. so if there is a bond issue then those monies can be repaid to whatever fund you take them out of and we'll go from there and again I said all along we're working with very good estimates I'm sure and we, you know bids are coming in daily and the bids I'm seeing and various things are positive I think it's a pretty good environment to be bidding in right now mm -hmm. but okay, we so. don't know we're dealing with our, we're, we're, we're dealing with estimates until we have bids so there's still the need possibly at the 11th hour to uh, redefine scopes of work projects so just for my simple mind <coughs> are we expecting <coughs> project resolutions at our next board meeting then I would expect that, yes. I absolutely. hope so. I, whatever, that would be my recommendation. Let's move, well, do what is we need based to do. On so we'll have the hearing, yeah, exactly. and then we will have the, the hearing project. has to be advertised, and, that, and, I, and as does the notice of hearing on the lease, and that was the other public hearing that I think Pat may have been alluding to, is when the lease terms are finally determined and the lease yeah. document self-prepared, we have to have a public hearing on the right. lease to give the public an opportunity yeah, to comment yes. whether they think the tax rate is reasonable and the rent's reasonable for what we're getting. Okay. Thank you. We are ready for the press conference. Anybody have any? Oh, we, we have a taker here. <laughs> I'm paying attention, I promise. But the, the public hearing could not be set for the next meeting. Is it too early to set that for next the next meeting, Ron? I don't think we get a public hearing on the lease, because I don't think we'll have the lease ready. And that's probably what we're going to combine the, the 1028 on the lease though, with the 1028 hearing on the high right. school. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have to have at least 10 days notice, and I think the federal law requires 50. In May. It's March at the earliest, probably. For the public hearing. Thank you. 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 Thank
Okay, anyone else? We are ready for our consent items. The consent items include <laughs> the approval of the January 23rd uh, meeting, minutes of those meetings, uh, and executive session in the January 30th board minutes. Also a recommendation uh, by Human Resources, there is not an addendum tonight, uh, recommendation to approve a corporation sponsored travel uh, request by the Business Professionals of America, a corporation sponsored travel, travel request, this, has, this is from the Athletic Department for <coughs> spring overnights, and then filing of reports by the Athletic Department and a filing of report on our employee health trust. Those items are in the uh, consent items for, th for this evening and I would recommend approval. I make uh, the motion to accept the consent items as presented. Okay, motion made by Kelly Baumgartner, Second. seconded by Aaron Stevens. Questions, comments? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Okay, we're to our second public commentary. <laughs> and seeing no public, <laughs> I guess we will move on to our follow-up of old business. I have a couple items um, for old business, and I'd like to ask Mr. Coddington to talk about our financing for this year, our general fund specifically, and the rainy day fund, if he could. At least give us a status and projection. Good evening. Hey. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. It's glad to be here today. It's always good to. Back on November the 13th, when we brought a proposal to the board about one time stipends for classified staff, administration, and a rate in, and a pay increase <coughs> for paraprofessionals. We wanted to know what that would do and how we were going to balance our budget. And, it, and I want to get, so this should, this form should look familiar to you. And we had said that we were going to end 2012 with a rainy day fund of $3,077,000. This is November 13th. Uh, we actually ended the year with a rainy day fund of 3487000 Now, I didn't touch that. <laughs> <laughs> we had also stated the way we were going to balance the budget is we were going to keep and maintain our programs for the 2013, give some stability to the corporation. So that we were going to have to make some general fund cuts, but we were going to subsidize that a bit with the rainy day support. So we were going to have 400,000 in cuts, $469,000 of rainy day support, which would balance our budget for 2013. <coughs> and we would end the year with a rainy day cash balance of 2,608,000. Now, we're 60 days into 2013, and we have an update by saying <coughs> we now believe that our, we, we don't have an $869,000 deficit, we have a $735,000 deficit. But keeping that in there, we're going to end the year with $3,028,000 if we use that, do both of those supports. Now, another way of looking at that <coughs> is if we were okay with 377, we're going to end a year minimally with 3025, only using $77,000 of the rainy day. Basically, we're using 2012 to fund 2013. Now, we also put together, Ms. Stockton, <coughs> how are you going to say, how is the corporation, I'm not saving, I'm just keeping score, how are we going to make a balanced budget doing this? Well, last year we had 24 teacher retirements. Some were replaced, some were But if we only have 15 teacher retirements this year at a total cost of $79,000, and we replace all 15 of those, and we have no reduction in staff because we want to maintain our programs, 
That would save us $465,000. Thus, we're only needing $400. We also, and I think uh, Mrs. Stewart will speak to this, that if we take our uh, outsourcing of substitutes in-house because of the markup on that, we would save 122. The pair of potential savings uh, that we look at it. So we've got some stuff minimally that we said we can save this year $618,000. We only need to put 400 to make this work. Fact is, I would suggest that we've already saved $500,000 this year. That's why we're only $100,000 where we are. So I just wanted to give you an update. This year, we will balance the budget. You'll see where we are. Uh, and Dr. Moore, so as Mr. Slifer is talking about our rainy day fund support, this is another average to program, rainy day for program support so we can have stability to the corporation. Does this make sense? Did I go too fast? Are we connecting the dots? Yes. One dot I need, under the pair of potential savings, that, those are just guesstimates. Just guesstimates. Last year, we had no two-hour delays. Right. If you have, we've already had two this year. Right. Okay. Hiring lag as people leave and come on board some sick sure. days that we're not doing this. Yeah, that. Yes, Mr. C. The uh, Kelly Services to in-house, could you <coughs> talk just briefly about that for an explanation? Well, that was our other, that was our other topic. So, Mrs. Stewart? We've, um, why was, we were given the charge of finding ways to save money uh, by uh, bringing back the substitute teacher services here or the managing of those services here. And so I contacted Kelly Services to explain to them the direction in which we were going to go, and then three other service providers, PCMI, and I don't know what those initials stand for, ASOP, which is an online uh, sub-acquisition service, and then looked at the possibility of doing a having an independent sub subservice i visited one in indianapolis and it's uh, a young lady who works out of her home and contracts the subs much like we did before except the school district provided computer they fully sure. furnished the office and that took care of all those costs and after looking at those three options as well as talking with Kelly Services about what are some ways we could save more money. They, they had about a 42% markup at one point and they brought that down at one point for us. So um, we looked at how we could save even more money. So I compared those four choices and we will take on, take back the sub-teachers as RCS employees. We will do the training and recruiting in-house. And Kelly Services can maintain a call center for us as they do now and the 24-7 web access for us, which has been something that I think teachers have appreciated and building administrators as well as subs. They can go online at any time to see if there's a sub job available or to create one. <coughs> so um, looking at the other three choices, uh, we some they, they did their own recruiting. Some of them did. Some of them did the training themselves. Others did not. And the interesting thing is Kelly Services now has the existing sub pool. The other three would have to develop Denial. an existing sub pool. So um, that's my recommendation that we, I'm not asking for a vote. It's, I don't. Just a discussion. Just a discussion. Mm -hmm. Suzanne, did you have a question? I did actually. Um, what are the costs? I realize there's not a check being written for the training and recruiting. But what would be the cost now of someone 
of our staff is going to have to spend that time training recruiting and not <coughs> doing other things. You know what? It'll just get done. Well, I know that. We, the, the cost, <coughs> there won't be an additional cost. We've, we have we have simply challenged um, that department as we're challenging all departments. Okay. Doing more with less. <coughs> but, <coughs> so does this mean that um, Kelly Services will take care of the online? The online part? and the calling. The, the, they'll, they'll operate the call center. They'll also. <coughs> um, we give them our list of subs and they call. They already, they, have, they already have the subs. <coughs> they'll be they'll just become our employees. And as we recruit more, we will input their names into the service. I I have yet to meet with Kelly to devise a transition plan. We've talked to some degree, but yes, Linda, we'll have to give them the names of the subs we get. So okay. really well, I was yes. wondering because I, I remember when we went to Kelly Services. Um, because I had lots of questions then about the cost and um, and so but I just remember that one of the challenges that RCS faced was the recruiting and that's one of the reasons that we went to Kelly services right. and so I just was wondering how that is going to affect us with subs it'll be a challenge mm -hmm. that, that that's one of the trade-offs when you pay a 42% markup, let's put it in real dollars. They charge approximately $96. They charge us $96 an hour. They're paying somebody. A day. A day. Or sub. A, a day. And they're paying the sub 65. That's, that's a markup. Now, what they're proposing right now is would cost us $14,000 a year to use their software and use the same system. It would be, it's not, it, we based it on, what, what was it, I can't remember, was it a dollar thirty per sub per day? It's three dollars fourteen cents per absence. Okay, so we pay the sixty-five and three dollars, it's sixty-seven. Wow, a lot of difference. Now, what's the trade-off on that? That's not our, that, that's going to be one of the jobs we do. That's not going to be the only job we do. So, we may not have as <clears throat> large a sub pool as we would like at all times but right now what are the things that we're finding when we increase the paraprofessionals salaries that now then that daily rate as a paraprofessional is comparable to what they were paying as a sub and they'd rather be a paraprofessional than a sub so we've got some now we've got competition with it our when ourselves with that well and and one of our, the reasons that we also went to this service was because paraprofessionals were being taken from their jobs mm -hmm. to um, be a sub and I'm understanding that that's happening a <coughs> lot more yes. here recently it is and that's one of the things because they're having trouble getting subs to the to the extent that we need right now we probably will too but we believe that for three dollars and forty cents a day per sub is a lot better value for us than thirty-seven dollars a day for a sub markup. You mean with Kelly Services? Yes. With no, we could talk all day long. We've been very pleased with Kelly Services. They've done a nice job, but we can't afford them today. That 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 that's the trade-off that we've got. We will we will take that in. We will make we will make this work. Got every confidence that uh, within uh, the departments in, the, in this office that we can do that. But what we like about still being able to use that three dollar and forty cent per day per sub, every sub and every teacher is used to the call in, yep. used to the software, used to the projects. Again, trying to have some continuity of services as we move forward with a cost saving. Where does they, I mean, since basically we're going to do the same program we have now, except we have ownership of the employees. So when you're using the cost them. savings, you know, we got to add back in FICA, we got to add back Every, in. We do. Yes. So we do. Still now, now, the variable is based on $500,000 worth of subs. Right. If we have $400,000 worth of subs, then the savings less, but <coughs> the savings is more also depending we're on which We're way. realizing some <coughs> savings already because we are not 
having the staff development that we had before and so we're not using as many subs this year and we need to continue to do that yeah. well, I think and continue I, to monitor our, ten, our attendance when I read the report and then back a couple of updates ago the attendance question is probably at the heart of this that is and how we can help all employees understand that attendance costs us all mm -hmm. well but we also I feel need to um, be responsible for ensuring that when we do have absences that it is handled appropriately because when a person is taken from one job and placed in another job that does affect our students mm -hmm. we're gonna have to look at ways to have <coughs> contingency plans and to be creative as we and I would really be interested in hearing when you come up with um, the contingency plans because I think that's important Suzanne what is uh, Kelly's assessment of the pool because they're struggling with recruitment too and that's what they do they so are struggling with recruitment here and in everywhere. all the other places where they're doing sub teaching is it because of the qualifications is it because of the number of people looking for work do they do they have they said yes all of the above all of the, the above, above. Okay. I'll just well pay too but right we I mean a lot of we started for work right now. we started with Kelly in 2008 and we had been paying sub 6656 at that point mm -hmm. I'm not sure though that the pay is necessarily the answer the only answer well and there are some days where we have spikes of sure. absenteeism mm -hmm. and that's when they're particularly challenged <coughs> and that's when you will hear mm -hmm. as board members you'll hear we didn't get a sub today mm -hmm. well you know there were a couple there were nine days <coughs> since in, during this school year where there were unfilled spots multiple unfilled spots um, the, during the flu the height of the flu season we had some days missed and around the holidays that's about when that started so is that when they pulled the paraprofessionals we have we've uh, talked about the importance of not pulling special ed paraprofessionals or title one but we may need to pull clericals from the office or the library paraprofessionals are we need to have students supervised right so and that would be the case whether we were with Kelly or not mm -hmm. you know it's uh, but the one thing that the computer and the call-in does is that it doesn't have somebody on the phone okay they didn't answer go to the next one they didn't answer go to the next one it keeps that sort of onus on the purse the people right it keeps right the well teacher and the and sub. Kelly services will do the call and they'll still do it okay. yeah we still will have a call center okay that's great. there are those um, 6 30 or 7 o'clock in the morning emergency illnesses that sure. happen sure Pat one thing we could do to help the situation is why don't you tell people how to sign up to be a substitute yeah, there, I mean we do have a big audience here and at uh, this point Kelly services is still mm -hmm. uh, providing the sub service for us <coughs> and they'll be here throughout um, March and April to train sub teachers and we do have information about how to become a sub on our website by contacting Kelly services at this point still. there is a link directly on the yes. www.wearerichmond.com yes D sometimes we say website and we forget I'm to tell sorry. people what it is okay Jeff uh, back to the uh, rainy day the <clears throat> with the final numbers on the rainy day you showed the you know three point basically 3.5 million did is that number um, include funds that we have already appropriated I mean it's, it's all net of all of them. it's net of all, net of all of that yes uh, could you send I'd like to see the list of what we have appropriated because I, I was thinking the other day when we were talking about the technology I think before I came on the board there was um, some technology expenses that were appropriated out of the day. Out of that 
And so if I, I, I'm curious of, if that's net of our appropriations, I, I would like to see. Because you, you, it's net of the appropriations, that some of them that haven't been spent yet. The technology thing, I still think, has $92,000 to spend, so it'll be 92000 higher than that. I've taken it out of that number. Well, maybe we should go back and take that 92000 <laughs> There's a use for it. Well, I, I would yeah, be interested in knowing right, how yeah, much yeah, of it is, that, is. It's in your capital projects. Yeah. Uh, it's in your rainy day number that, that we, we've got. That I, I'll be presenting that. At, well, no, I won't. I don't present it. Well, because one of the questions is, it's kind of odd, is, is, is one of the questions I had with the rainy day and was, uh, do we actually have, on every single time that we, I, I'm going to use the word appropriate, I mean, that may not be the right word, but that we appropriate the money out of the rainy day, does it, is it actually board action that that yes. transfer takes place? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, there is yeah, you know, as as I looked at the presentation that when we talked about meeting our general fund deficiencies for the end of this year, and it shows actually rainy day expenditures up there for 14 and for 15. Is that something? I don't remember that we actually we that's it, we talked about that, but it's nothing that we really approved well, as a board to do. We, right? we haven't asked for board action yet because we're not far enough into 2013. It may only be 200 thousand. Right. That, well, that's what I was that's, thinking. That's what I was going to say. So nothing's been appropriated, but that was what our it was. It was along with your approval for the staff increases or the staff stipends. That's the context in which we were discussing that. And so you asked how we would make that possible. We said that that's how it would be possible, and that's how it went through. Mm -hmm. So by that action, then we would have approved it. Mm -hmm. Okay. The concept. But the exact number will be coming probably at the close of the books. <laughs> right, right, I understand. In, in December, and we'll ask for board approval to do that on December 31st and say, what is the, the number, if there is a number. Yeah, if there is. Right. But I, I just, I'm just curious on what we have appropriated, and I'm just trying to yeah. add nothing's, up all my cash. Nothing's been appropriated. It's been appropriated for the technology, and it's been appropriated for construction projects at Dennis and at Hibbard that we're finishing up on. So when I show you the cash, the cash is going to be net of those. Do we have the uh, second ADM date yet? Friday. The, February 15th. Friday. Oh, this Friday? Friday? And do we have any idea of where we are with our student count? Not that I'm ready to discuss because until you hit a number, and every other school system agrees with your number, it's just a number. Okay. Mm -hmm. So maybe at our next meeting? We will have it at the next meeting. Yes, yeah. okay. okay, thanks. I wasn't exactly sure when that date was going to happen. Okay, anything else about the deficit or Kelly services? Okay, we are ready to move on to superintendent and board report reflection celebrations. And, um, well, do you have anything, Dr. Borg? Oh, go ahead. I'm looking over at the next, the tentative meeting. Right okay. Um, first of all, uh, we want to update, um, to have an update on anything legislative-wise, and Dixie is our point person for that information. So, Dixie? Well, um, I think it's important that everyone try to... Uh, email or write or call uh, your legislators right now because there is a multitude of <laughs> bills, I can't tell you how many, um, that are in committee or out of committee and, uh, and especially the expansion of the voucher program uh, which would affect public schools. Okay. And you want to share um, about our meeting this Friday? Uh, we will be having a meeting this Friday uh, with Representative Ham, and that will give us an opportunity to bring up things that um, we're concerned about. So it's a chance for the uh, people on the board to be looking at some of the um, bills that are up and come prepared. Is that going to be taped? I wasn't, we weren't planning to tape it. Yeah. But it is a, it's a public meeting. Um, 
And the reason it's a public meeting is because we're anticipating that there may be more than three of you here at one time, so yeah. we've just yeah. assumed it needs to be advertised. On that note, though, I'm, and I know we were specifically interested in, in um, Mr. Ham because he's new. Did we invite the others? Did we invite this Senator was Paul? His, this was his office that mm -hmm. asked he, They made for the, the request. Meeting. That's right. Mm -hmm. I forgot about that. I was thinking we had. So. And when you went to Indianapolis, didn't you meet with, didn't you have an opportunity to meet with um, Mr. With, Paul? With Senator Paul, we did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, and next we're going to have a discussion, uh, an exciting discussion, hopefully. Um, about a school that we visited, several of us visited in Kokomo. And Dr. Bohr, if you want to give a little bit of background um, sure. about that visit. Kokomo is experiencing some of the same issues that Richmond is experiencing. Uh, they, have, they have reorganized their district. They've closed buildings. Um, but one of, the, one of the directions they've gone is to try to market specific buildings in, in an interest-based manner. They've taken their buildings and they have looked at creating markets with those buildings. One of the buildings was slated for uh, clo permanent closure. It's a little building that's out on the west side of Kokomo and rather than close it, they had investigated the integrated, an integrated arts concept Basically, what integrated arts is all about is that you teach the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic, through the, uh, through the arts. And um, we took a field trip, several of us, nine of us, uh, to Kokomo two weeks ago, and we had a chance to go through that building. We met with the teachers. We met, uh, we met students. And we heard from the superintendent and board members and the principal uh, how that experiment is going because it, it truly is an experiment at this point. They're in their first year. It just opened. It's a, a building that has been given a, a makeover because in that building you don't have a gym. You have an auditorium. They've taken a gym and they've made it an auditorium. Um, so we had that opportunity to go through that building and what you're going to be hearing at this point would be some of the board reflections on what they actually saw. Um, so I'll turn it back over to you. Okay, and those people who went from the board, um, I went and Dixie went and Pat went and of course Dr. Borf and then Kathy Parker went and Tammy Rhodes. And then um, Mrs. Hugenboom? Yes, Latimer. and Gwen Latimer. And, and Terry Kinsey. Terry Kinsey. Right, right. So, um, Dixie or Pat, who wants to start here? You want to start, Dixie? Well, I, I was excited about it. Um, it's, I think it's an idea that hopefully we can pursue. Um, and I want to say that an integrated arts school is not a performing arts school. It is one where you, um, the curriculum integrates the arts into its lessons, its projects, its assessments, where you show mastery of learning through the, that subject area. Um, creativity and the arts are inter intermingled with academic learning and it makes a powerful force. And there's a lot of research that I've read recently about it that shows that it improves um, and increases academic and achievement, motivation, attendance, lessens behavior problems, engages students more, keeps them more focused, uh, just a whole host of things. Um, the Kokomo School, um, it goes one hour longer um, and they provide instruction in piano, keyboard, violin, drama, choral music, dance, art, um, and so forth. And the teachers still work their traditional day, but they have extra time uh, if they need to leave during the school day, or they have extra planning time. A lot of the teachers said they didn't have to take any work home hardly at all because they, could, they had time to do it all at school. And 
the reason why I think it would be so great here in Richmond is because we do have a thriving arts community here in Richmond. We have an art museum attached right to our high school. We have a performing arts center at Civic Hall attached right to our high school. We have Richmond Symphony Orchestra and we have a, um, uh, the uh, Civic Theater and we have Earlham and Ivy Tech and IU East and all these things, all these people who could really be partners and support this kind of education. Um, in my opinion, we should have already been there. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, so, um, Let me add some of the details and specifics that I found really interesting. The way they added an hour to the day was they hired community people on contract to do some of the arts teaching. Oh, so they nice. didn't have PE, they had rhythm and movement and they had a local dance teacher. They violin was taught by a kinder music teacher. And the keyboard was taught by one of their music teachers, but he had a half day here and a half day there, so it worked <coughs> the, the whole schedule. And, and they found money to do that. A couple of other interesting things. This was all done within the teacher's contract, and they had negotiated that, and that's why the teachers had some extra time during the day. They're, they have a partnership with Butler University and Butler there's a professor at Butler that is big in this integrated arts teaching practicum and the teachers who are there chose to be there and their morale was out of out of sight many of we talked to one teacher who had, was ready to quit she'd been there 10 years she was tired of all this kind of stuff and she went to this integrated art school and they spent two weeks I think at Butler in the summer and then they've had other professional development. What you need to know is they had a 90 minute reading block, they still had to take acuity, <coughs> they were doing all of the things that you need to do but they were doing it. <laughs> we sat in one room and this teacher was working on something and all of a sudden she breaks out into song and she <laughs> wasn't the best singer of all the world but she <laughs> breaks out into song and all the kids start <coughs> singing. And the physical movement is part of just built into their day. They started with some kind of dance that I'm not sure we all know, but we're too old for all of that. A couple of other things, though, that were very interesting. Uh, their facilities are very homey. They had a dining room where they had dining tables and silverware and people serving the food. So it was a very family-oriented. I happened to run into a parent who said that last year his kindergarten kid came home, was so tired, hated school, et cetera, et cetera, got him into this. They have to pass a Torrance creativity test mm -hmm. in order, there's a, the benchmark to get into this. But this kid cries to stay at school all of the time and he doesn't even believe he's been there an hour longer. So, so all of that was important, the way they actually structured it couple of things, though, that I think you need to, to think about. The superintendent was, has as his philosophy, they're going to niche market. They're going to find these places where parents really want kids and build those kind of schools. They have IB schools. You went to visit mm -hmm. an IB school. Mm -hmm. They had this integrated art. So they're offering a menu of opportunities. And so where they had lost folks to the outlying areas, those people were coming back because of the choices. Couple of other interesting things they do. They send out postcards celebrating the people, most of the kids, all of the top 10% or whatever were focused <coughs> on a postcard. The other thing they did was they had massive open houses. Remember, did you go to the high school last year in that one? That was a, a, an overwhelming evening, but they have one week where parents are welcome just to come to any of the schools to kind of look at things and so on and so forth. The principal was key at this integrated arts school. He had worked a lot with project-based learning and all of those kind of things. But when you walked into the building, you felt a felt a difference and I think it is doable here for mm -hmm. because we have lots of community partners already well and the thing that I really keyed in, in on was they started this this year I believe yeah they have 200 on the waiting list oh, <laughs> 200 wow. and 50 of those are from the county schools yes mm -hmm. how big the is it right now how, how many students 192 or something like they're that. going to Some add three classrooms next year mm -hmm. um, 
it's not a real large school, so they don't right. have a lot of room for expansion. But it is a very diverse population. Absolutely. And they had emotional issues. <clears throat> they had special ed kids. But it was, um, it w it was uh, joyful learning. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I think that's what we all came a away with, that uh, there was definitely a joy of teaching and a joy of learning. Um, you know, there was the one other thing that really struck me as a person who has a book for every question and a book for every issue. They didn't have a library that was very large, and they had found that they weren't really going to have to build that. What, wasn't that well, what I, they were saying? They had, they had uh, purchased a lot of books that went along with mm -hmm. the integrated arts concept, and they had a library, but it was, um, it was not necessarily staffed with what, right. um, nor stacked with books right and I thought oh and while we're talking about that just look around us this evening right. <laughs> all of the <clears throat> uh, yes. but I but I think it raises Linda some really big picture questions about future programming mm -hmm. and how uh, one question we didn't ask and I wanted to ask them is what happens after they leave elementary school how do they continue that kind of thing through middle and then high school? I mean, I think it's the continuum piece well, the that was for, interesting. Well, the thing for us, though, is now, because we went to the intermediate schools, now we actually have band, orchestra, all that is five. We have 5-8. It's That's available. Right. And so I think we've already kind of come, kind of met that from the other direction. <coughs> quite, quite interesting. And just do it intentionally. Yeah. yeah, I think another and clone Kevin Van Note, but I mean, you know, another thing that uh, was important uh, was that um, they invest in their teachers, and one of the things that they did, um, we found out that the Kennedy Center in Washington D.C. has an integrated arts program where uh, professional development, um, where it's. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's free to attend, but of course the cost that would be involved yeah, yeah. would be the transportation and you know the housing, that kind of thing. But um, they sent every one of the teachers that were going to be in this in, involved in the integrated arts school, they sent them to the Kennedy Center during the summer. And um, <clears throat> So that was, I think that's, um, that's key because we do have to invest in our teachers. And they also, uh, in their pilot project with uh, Butler, Butler came in and they're providing ongoing mm -hmm. staff, mm -hmm. staff mm -hmm. training. And the teachers found that very, very useful. Because the teachers, one of the struggles that the teachers were having w was uh, they thought that they had to integrate every single lesson yeah. that they had mm -hmm. to do something that was integrated in some way and um, so what they have learned is that no you can't integrate every lesson but you certainly have the flexibility to integrate in your lessons as as you can and um, and so they're that's one of the things that they're working on this year obviously so um, Anyway, um, anybody have any questions, comments, um, well, so where do we forward go thinking? Yeah. Where do we go from here? I mean, how well, do we? I'm going to sign up a little dude I know, so <laughs> let's get it started, right? <laughs> well, don't you, I mean, we have talked about um, moving forward or ha having a really quality discussion about um, topical schools or, or the interest-based schools. schools or whatever mm -hmm. and we have said okay we're getting the building thing taken care of now let's get to the program yeah. so I think we're ready to have, to that, have that discussion mm -hmm. and we talked in uh, our executive group that it's time yeah. so you know I think and I think we agree it's time for us to have a real work session about interest-based curriculum 
what do we what what our priorities be we have thrown out multiple things here ib international baccalaureate we've talked about arts we've talked about science science yeah stem like a stem academy we've talked about um technology yeah tech mm -hmm. so i know we've talked about a lot of, of different ideas when we do have the work session if you, if there could be some suggestions from those of you who have studied it where to go to find that information so that we all come you know a little bit prepared well and will it be a work session where teachers that are interested would be a part of that work session or I'd like members. to hear their ideas or community members or community members well, right be all the above yeah. could I answer go ahead. and then go ahead. Aaron is next <laughs> um, one of the things that the executive committee talked about was um, you know we talked about our work session that we had a couple weeks ago and so we were wondering if that would serve us as a format uh, for future work sessions where we have um, some discussion with <coughs> public being our teachers our public our you know people interested people the arts community you know whoever but we structure our meetings so that we involve people in our discussions and then we come together as a board in the second part of the meeting to reflect on just like we did a couple weeks ago reflect on what was said and um, kind of give us a direction for where we go next mm -hmm. so with that said Aaron, I, I I agree wholeheartedly with that and I think <clears throat> I'm getting excited right now thinking about the potential um, right now this discussion as we have it is coming from those who went and experienced it there for a little while and you know we're sharing our thoughts but I think one of the things that would really be fantastic is before we have the earnest discussion amongst ourselves and then take it out there let's bring them in and have them involved with the initial earnest discussion so that we have community partnership and ownership Dixie was talking about teachers parents business people talk about this get that input before we do I think that that builds for future roundtable discussions with the community uh, for them to buy in mm -hmm. buy it into it. it and that start from the very if we do that from the very beginning I think pushing us to that next level we will not only have the community support but they will be the biggest supporters too to go out I like the thought as Kokomo says you know they've got you know that waiting list of how many students and 50 of them come from outside of Kokomo proper um, imagine what we can do here and we've talked about that a little bit but I mean uh, my imagination is flying right now when I think about little kids who who enjoy doing these types of things and just how much of a greater impact education will have on them. great but I want us to remember not only to talk about elementary uh, misty and i were talking about this mm -hmm. earlier and if if you go back to the grant application for race to the top that karen and misty put together they were about smaller learning <coughs> communities in the high school that had thematics and if you look at and you kind of back that up do you have middle school support for that intermediate school support for that do you have elementary school support for that so this we have to look not just at nice elementary good thematic elementary schools but we got to look at it the entire the continuum, continuum. Mm -hmm. absolutely and so when we're inviting people not just the elementary especially although that's exciting and that's where I would like to start it and grow it up but what they were doing in the race to the top was starting it you know with the high school support and did I represent mm -hmm. that correctly well I know one of the things that was uh, discussed at <clears throat> our meeting a couple weeks ago within our groups <coughs> was um, the importance um, because of course the Westview people that went with us went back and they were having conversation and um, excited about the concept sure but um, they were really adamant about a a really firm plan absolutely and um, so you know and I think I feel like that's you know that's what we're talking mm -hmm. about also Suzanne I also think one of the things that can come out of a work session that has public invited to it um, well two things first of all is there's really creative people out there and maybe sure. there's something we haven't thought of and second of all we talk about being a niche market 
uh, a school district, which I think is a great, I love the language. Um, I hope that we get some people to come out and talk to us about, yeah, that's what I've been looking for for my child and figure out if we have the customer base for some of this. I think that we do, but I would really like to be able to have that open forum to hear mm -hmm. from people that say that would be fantastic. You know, to go right along with that, um, one of the details we heard in the conversation with the superintendent at Kokomo was that there was a community survey right? and to, to determine interest. And I, I can't remember in that conversation whether the survey focused on the integrated arts or whether it was a broader one dealing with interest-based schools well, in, in general. my notes, it was a broader, broader questions about what interest-based education they were uh, interested and in. That's, well, um, what I've done is I've asked him for a copy of that. Oh, that's great. Okay. That's great. So whatever it was, um, we'll know if for he's sure. Willing, if he's willing to share it. <laughs> I don't know if they've copyrighted that. In no. It's just to me that it's a golden opportunity for us to learn what our market wants, mm -hmm. and if we're going to be entrepreneurial about it, let's go for it. Absolutely, and figure out who. Now that we is. should also mention that that very night he was traveling with a with a small group up to M Minneapolis uh -huh. to look at a STEM. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's another one I think. Concept. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're we're missing out on use, utilizing Project Lead the Way. In the high school by not by not having Connecting that continuum dots. all the way up through the other grades I wanted to ask um, dr. Parker if um, you want to share anything that um, comes to mind from our visit I don't have anything to add I think you've covered it all <laughs> it was a, it was a great trip and it was a very impressive school mm -hmm. I think one yeah. of the things that from the conversation I don't know if it was from you or no, I think it was from you <coughs> um, they had talked about we had talked we we've got a one-to-one -one initiative that we've been kind of skirting around and talking about mm -hmm. and part of the way that <coughs> at, at least I think I'm representing this right what I remember hearing was they've used the one-to-one -one initiative mm -hmm. kind of as an interest base in one of their schools instead of trying to do it district-wide right mm -hmm. that's, that's so correct mm -hmm. pilot that so yeah. you know that may be some things that could help us sure can. figure, you know, to it, work into that. It was kind of interesting how they were working because it seemed as though they would get one um, one school in place and then they would be working on the next, next one. Um, mm -hmm. because they already have a couple um, elementaries and middle schools that are international baccalaureate. They right. this next year. They're going to be uh, going to uh, international baccalaureate preschool. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a pay, but um, they are going to be instituting that in one of their international baccalaureate schools. That's taking that continuum very seriously. Then, and isn't they it? started. Well, and the they have they have a very international audience right now, given oh, the economic development and vitality that's going on in Kokomo. So again, it's niche marketing. It's what do our customers need and what would our community benefit from? And I believe that maybe two of their schools might be one-to-one, -one, two of their elementary schools, at least one of them. At least one. one. And then mm -hmm. um, the integrated, integrated art school was another. And I, I believe they have um, seven elementaries, maybe. Yeah, I Not think that one thing that was really interesting is they do have, I think they have three or four schools that are truly magnet schools that are open to everyone in the district. And then they have their neighborhood schools where you are assigned to go if you live in that neighborhood district. But they have taken those neighborhood schools <laughs> and had them have a focus as well. So there was mm -hmm. a technology with the one-to-one. -one and There's a high-ability school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So... Um, Anyway, and, and he was. He was on his way to um, learn about STEM. So I think, and they <coughs> were looking at that continuum also because they have yeah. included their middle schools. And um, yeah. so one more thing. Their logo was generally for Kokomo, but each program and each school had an identifying logo. So we redesigned We Are to fit all of the different logos. So, so it can be done. So it can't be done. No, but well, they were individual. They were individual, but, yes. but there was a, a connector between, there was a general logo that 
kind of served as a background. Well, and I just wanted to say one other thing because, and this we had just fun, stuck in my mind from the beginning of this year when, when, the, when we had the early college kids here and we were asking them what they were interested in yeah, and right. without exception, except for one, they all said music or art. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's right. And that mm -hmm. has just that's stayed right. with me and that's why I really got excited about the school. Um, and also, something like this, uh, we're trying to attract businesses and jobs to our community. This would be a beacon for that. Yeah. So, um, do I hear you all um, mm -hmm. saying that you would like for us to move toward a work session, uh, hopefully, the first one in March, March. Yeah. and uh, we will organize it so that we are having um, a very energetic conversation mm -hmm. um, about this topic. <coughs> Does that sound? Mm -hmm. I think that sounds exciting. Yeah. And let's think of people we want to have in the room when we're having that discussion. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. Special, not mm -hmm. special, right. to, but you know, just to make them aware would be good. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to segue into our um, celebrations, if it's okay, um, because I am surrounded <laughs> by some artwork here Amazing that stuff. was done by um, Kurt Chastain mm -hmm. students at Dennis. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And um, Look at that. I did invite him to come, but he has a lot on his plate right, right now. And so... He gave me some information about the projects um, that they do, and I, I'm sure I won't uh, relay it nearly as well as, as he could, but I'm going to do the best I can. One of the things that he told me was that as the students um, do their art, they apply both elements of art and principles of design to each of their lessons. And he stresses to the students that art must have meaning and direction, and it has to draw interest, comments, and opinions from others. And I think you will agree mm -hmm. that the work that is displayed here Suzanne, would certainly that so do neat. that. Hold them up, Suzanne. I want so that. that. Interesting <laughs> thing. About this has to draw comments and opinions. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Well, That's amazing. But what was really interesting to me is there's a process here. And with the clay, they start out with like a pen, he called it a pinch pot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that gives them a feeling of, of the thickness of the clay. Then the next thing that they do is they go to the fish. And um, you all in the public can't see, but we have many uh, pieces of art displayed here in our boardroom. But the fish helps them to learn how to put two pieces of clay together, to mold them together. Then they do what they, he calls a spoon plate, and that's to appreciate the function of the artwork. And then they go to the bowls that he says that you use some kind of a mold for this, and then to do the vases, they uh, put more than one bowl together in order to form the, the vase. So. I thought that was pretty interesting. Oh, there's another fish. Here is a carving, and I think this is made out of balsa wood, mm -hmm. and this is That's to really understand neat. depth and 3D. So do we have a kiln at Dennis? Well, I, this is just balsa no, wood. No, but I mean for the have a kiln. Well, evidently we do. We do have a kiln at Dennis. But maybe a not kiln at Dennis? Do we, do we have, have a kiln at Test? And I know. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In fact, the other almost fish. all of our elementaries we do. They have kilns? Oh, how cool. Oh, that's wow. neat. Mm -hmm. And then this <laughs> is a collage with paper tubes, <coughs> and this is to create texture and movement. Isn't that cool? That's really cool. I mean, those are just paper tubes and paper rolled up, and it's just great art. Mm. And then he didn't that's say neat. anything about this. But of the chair. I do, too. <coughs> there are oh, lots of chairs in our room, and it's made with, like, wire. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, sculpted, obviously. And then I thought this was pretty cool because what he did here was he took a picture and uh, uh, put it to, cut it in half, and then they, the student had to uh, draw what they thought would be on the other, the other side. side. So oh, neat. made it he is look so like creative, and, isn't he? I mean, so just they have all kinds of art experiences and art that obviously, um, when we were here for a meeting, I had a parent tell me that um, some of her her child's artwork got lost, and she was so upset because I mean, you would want to hold on to to yeah. these mm -hmm. pieces of art, obviously. So anyway, um, thank you to the wonderful teaching of Mr. Chastine and the rest of our art teachers uh, throughout the system. And our children certainly um, have wonderful art experiences. He also sings a fabulous off-key happy birthday to every <laughs> child in his room. <laughs> How sweet is that? Magic <laughs> moments. <laughs> Okay, so we're, oh, I forgot this. This was uh, a weaving, and uh, he said that they learned to tie knots and do all kinds of things. So. I can't tie a shoe. Okay, so other celebrations, yep. Pat. Uh, if you noticed, and I think maybe as we leave the meeting, they will put back up on the screen the advertisement for Beauty and the Beast, uh, our drama, music, <coughs> art, building trades, Almost every yes. high school department is involved in putting on uh, Beauty and the kids, Beast. I think? Is that what 100 I kids. Uh, tickets are available at Civic Hall, and it is Saturday evening, February 23rd. 23rd, and Sunday afternoon, February 24th. And that was on the screen when we came into the meeting, so maybe as we leave the meeting. Thank is. you very much. Uh, that will, yeah, and they are on sale now. Mm -hmm. And the kids are excited about it. I want to uh, congratulate Miriam Camus, who, came, who yes. placed sixth in diving at the state tournament last weekend. She won the girls' sectional uh, swimming and diving at New Palestine, mm -hmm. and she placed third in the regionals, and she came in sixth overall at, at state, which is excellent. She's just a sophomore. Last year, she finished 10th as a <coughs> freshman, so we definitely want to congratulate her. And it's impressive. She won and the, the North Swim Central team. Conference diving as well. Yeah. And uh, also Austin Bain Test, who uh, was the middle school state uh, champion wrestle, uh, winner in wrestling. Um, and then uh, we had uh, students in Matt Amos's classes that won some awards this past week. We had um, our academic teams at high school who won first place and I can't remember the different divisions. I mean, there was so much this week. <laughs> and then uh, the other thing that's going on, we have um, all 25 of the Business Professionals of America participants qualified for State Leadership Conference. That's gonna be <coughs> held in Indianapolis March 10th through 12th. So right now there's an opportunity to um, um, <coughs> go to Chili's. Uh, you have to get a uh, card from them to go and you get a discount or something and, and then I think it's donated to and the money is donated to mm -hmm. the business professionals for their trip sure. and um, before Jeff uh, reads the thank you you want to give a little bit of background as to um, the state board meeting yes uh, one of the highlights of last week was that um, Richmond was asked Richmond Community Schools was asked to present at the first State Board of Ed meeting that Glenda Ritz presided over. And the topic was our literacy initiatives, partnerships within the community and so on. And uh, Dr. Parker, uh, Mrs., uh, Mrs. Morgison and I had the opportunity to present that morning and we were the only school corporation asked to pre asked to present. Wow. I thought maybe we would be in a mm -hmm. in a list of them, but it was a real honor. We we highlighted the third grade academy because that is our um, premier partnership in uh, for literacy. But we also highlighted 
where we've been over the last decade in the acquisition of teaching and curriculum and as it pertains to literacy. They celebrated our scores because it shows a gradual progression that has not stopped. So it was a, it was a celebration. We were, we were planning for about a 10 minute presentation. I think we made it just maybe a little over 10 minutes, but then they went ahead and questioned us for some time. It was, it was a nice, nice conversation with the state board and, the, and our new superintendent. Mm -hmm. And so, Jeff is going to. Uh, thank you for coming today to present to the SBOE, School Board of. State, state Board. State Board of, of Education. Education. I appreciate you sharing your efforts and initiatives with us. As we all work to improve students' reading skills, it is valuable to share those things with which we find success. Congratulations on your improvements and results. Carrie Whitter. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, anybody else have? Um, yeah, I was gonna say that um, this weekend, no, next weekend, we're hosting a girls basketball regional tournament, which is new for us. It's not something we've had before. So it's another opportunity for us to um, showcase. showcase Richmond Community Schools. And I understand there's a need for some volunteers. So I thought I would take the opportunity to say that um, because there's going to be lots of people parking in our parking lots and some of those kinds of things are necessary. So if you find yourself um, interested in that, um, I think you contact Misty um, at 973-3300 and ask for Misty. <laughs> and um, I believe there's some incentive for volunteering. Yes, um, Mr. Bolster with the athletic department will, anybody who volunteers will have a student all pass for given to them um, for their efforts. Huh? Student? No, I, I oh, sorry. An all oh, sports oh, pass. Thank you. For next year? For next year. Yeah. Um, so, oh. so we're at a slow incentive. Yeah, it is. So that's, it's a, it's a really great opportunity for us. I mean, this is, and then we'll also have boys in March as well but we right haven't now, had one of those tournaments I don't know in he how said long ever <laughs> oh semi state this is semi state this is semi this is oh I thought it was regional it's semi state oh, oh semi I'm sorry you're right I knew that okay. the boys semi state girls. And, girls. and girls and girls but girls, girls is first and it's February 23rd uh, which is the same weekend as Beauty oh. and the Beast we oh should be done. No, we'll be done. But <laughs> it's um, it is a great opportunity to showcase what we you know the great things that we do in our people and all of that. So I want us to take the opportunity to be um, very welcoming and that sort of thing. So mm -hmm. I, I would also like to have uh, Mr. Coddington talk about uh, an excursion he's making with Mr. Bolzer on Friday. I don't know whether we're going to come home with any, any, uh, any of the goods here, but <laughs> the Sadra Company is making available to us uh, at a very, very reasonable rate. Mr. Coddington, I'll turn it over to you. Four, uh, we have our choice of, if we're interested, in four luxury coaches, one of four, that, uh, that if we're interested in Chad, Mr. Bolzer and I are going over Friday to meet with Mr. Sodrell, Noah Sodrell, tour. Uh, have, we'll have the records of three, three years maintenance records on each one of the buses. Um, I've got pictures. Uh, it, it could be an exciting time to, again, That's to state cool. who we are as Richmond, <coughs> part of community partnerships that we talk about, um, and uh, something that they said is, we were moving forward in our relationship. When one became available, they would share them with us. They called and said, we've got four that are available. Would you like to see them? So, so for students or for public? Th or This just... would be for students, but it would be for uh, probably trip. the high school. It would be for athletic trips. Uh, it, it, they, they have like restrooms. They have Wi-Fi. Yes. They've got uh, DVRs. I think that's what they call it. It could also be for <laughs> choir. It could be for... Sure. Right. I was thinking about your BPA. If they have a trip to make, yeah. it would be nice Something to have to a reasonable... Um, so, so, and restrooms, cool. air conditioning. Um, that's cool. And, and they're, they're, offering it a, they're offering these at a very reasonable price. These are, what, $100,000 vehicles? 
400,000 $400, luxury oh, motor coaches. Oh my gosh. Now, <clears throat> now they they're, they're say not, that we're not paying that so that yes. just, just so people can have, <laughs> no, let, let's put this in perspective. We have, we buy $100,000 buses and we get a $5,000 trade in for them 12 years later. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. These are 400,000 that we between twelve and twenty thousand dollars. You're kidding. No. <laughs> I want one. Oh my yeah. gosh. <laughs> wow. Depending on the year, the model that, that we're looking at. So how many people? <clears throat> how many uh, seats? Forty seven passengers. Wow. So uh, it Very would be cool. able to take any sporting event that we have uh, except football. And then Mr. Bolzer said that's what we have seniors for. <laughs> 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 seniors get to ride. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Great so answer. Stay tuned. Uh, oh, wow. We're, we're, that's kind of cool. We're pleasantly surprised, and uh, we think really this cool. could be a real opportunity to, to pull in other communities with a bus that says, We are Richmond on all four sides of it. Yeah, uh, some of the uh, trips that some of our kids take, like you said, choir and uh, some of those other things. Yeah, there BPA. Are, kind of are there any trips, trips that um, we take where we have to rent a motor coach? Not have don't. to. Well, we like don't. the Washington <laughs> trip. Well, I mean, the Washington, Washington. Well, the Washington, yeah. D, the, sure. the Washington, D. And there's been a Florida. few donations of those coaches for certain trips, but we've not done that on a typical basis I don't think oh how cool will they do the paint job yeah I, I'm that's what we're to find out I, okay. I'm, they have the wherewithal to do the paint job and to do this now at our cost and what it was sure. I mean huh. we don't know what the deal is but uh, we will go look and we will come back with an offer I'm sure uh, and understand that we're looking this would be an athletics expense Gotcha. This is not a general fund expense. It's not a transportation <laughs> expense. It would be an athletic expense. Now, the gas, the maintenance, and that is another issue. And <laughs> sure. the driver would oh, come yeah, out of transportation. Yeah. But. Mm -hmm. Well, they do anyway. Okay, well, we will cool. stay tuned. Anything else? We need to um, review our tentative agenda for our meeting of February 27th. We have on that, uh, for our snapshot of success, we'll be celebrating uh, Disability Awareness Month. Mrs. Bergdahl will be bringing to you a special <coughs> presentation on that. Action items will include our donations and our 2020 vision will be a projects update. Now I do reserve uh, some, some latitude here to accommodate Mr. Cross's uh, recommendation as a result of your conversation tonight, there may be a piece in here on that. The, the consent items would be the approval of the, the minutes, human resources, everything we normally do. That's our tentative agenda. Okay. Well, I believe we are adjourned. <laughs>